Hi, this is Roger Conrad. I'm co-editor of MLP Profits with Elliot Gu. What I want to talk about today is uh, really to answer a question that uh, has been posed to me by some of our readers. And that is that uh, what's, what's the impact of this, uh, uh, one, the, uh, in, the oil spill uh, in the Gulf, um, and two, uh, some of the tightening regulations on onshore drilling as well. We've certainly seen uh, an explosion of, of interest and uh, um, particularly of, of people who live in areas that uh, where drilling is, has, uh, uh, goes on, uh, whether it's offshore or whether it's onshore. There was a, a major HBO uh, special recently uh, looking into the issue of fracking, which is basically injecting uh, water and, uh, and uh, with some uh, chemicals into the ground to uh, increase the harvest of, of natural gas from very hard to get to wells. Um, and this is a practice that varies widely around the country, uh, around North America, um, and in terms of, of what sort of chemicals are used, in other words, what's called fracking fluid, what's, that's injected in the ground, um, where, it, uh, where it takes place, and there's an enormous amount of controversy uh, that has sprouted up in, in, in many areas. Obviously, this HBO special was very widely watched and has raised some concerns, particularly um, in Pennsylvania and New York and, and, and some of the areas that are now in the uh, Marcellus Shale area, um, as, which has now uh, begun to be developed. Uh, regarding the, but as investors, pretty much we're concerned with where our, uh, our holdings are vulnerable, where they might be vulnerable, and so forth. Um, and, and on the offshore drilling front, as we pointed out, uh, it's, there's really not a lot of exposure. Uh, Enterprise Products Partners, one of our longtime recommendations, uh, bought a company called El Paso Energy Partners, which had just then changed its name to Gulfstream. And it had a, a number of offshore uh, uh, energy assets, fee generating. Uh, from from ac that uh, you know, generating fees from uh, uh, pipelines and so forth um, being used by the offshore industry. Um, and this uh, 10 years ago was a very big part of the business. Right now, it's though it's only a little over one percent of uh, of revenue. So uh, it's not really that significant. It's also not really that affected by. Um, what's going on in the Gulf. Of course, the moratorium was overturned by a judge there. I expect fully uh, more uh, restrictions there, though. But again, this should not affect uh, enterprise to any, uh, any significant degree. In fact, um, as more emphasis comes on the onshore front, as these shale uh, reserves open up, which they are very involved in, um, they could actually benefit from less activity in the Gulf. We have to get our energy from somewhere, and again, uh, the most logical place, if you can't get it offshore, you can't get it from the deep water, is going to be onshore projects, and particularly for the U.S. Uh, in the shale gas areas, and that's where, again, companies develop. Now, what happens if uh, Congress really comes down on fracking uh, or, or hydraulic fracturing, um, as it's, uh, as it's uh, known more in its full, full, uh, full name? Well, I think uh, obviously drilling costs will probably go up in these areas, but a, a full-scale uh, abandonment of the technique is extremely unlikely. Uh, the vast majority of, of, of natural gas production in the U.S. right now is from some variation of fracking. So, um, as we saw in the congressional hearings over the Exxon Mobil uh, XTO Energy merger, which were several months ago, um, as we saw, there really is not any political will to clamp down completely on, on the practice. What I think we will see, though, is a, a clamp down on what sort of fracking fluids are used, and particularly what sort of fluids are used and their impact on potential impact on water supplies. There's certainly a lot of stories out there, and, and the HBO special made clear about some of those uh, regarding the, um, uh, the alleged uh, water could be set on fire. Um, and uh, because of the methane that it, that had leached out into the soil from allegedly again from the practice of fracking, uh, some of the horror stories about water being uh, making people sick, making farm animals sick, and so forth. Um, you know, television uh, wants to get eyeballs, and I think you have to look at some of these charges with something of a, a, of a jaundiced eye. But again, I think that uh, you know it, it it is getting interest, and as an investor, you want to be very focused on what potential regulations uh, can come down the pike. And there could be some, uh, again, some restrictions on what sort of uh, fluids are used in fracking, and that could uh, very well increase drilling costs, particularly in certain areas. Um, what does that mean for our MLPs? Well, 
Our MLPs operate under uh, mainly under fee generating, uh, 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 fee con uh, based contracts uh, that are some are based on capacity, some are based on throughput. But the bottom line is, is they don't turn a spade, they don't dig a shovel full of earth on a pipeline project or a storage project unless they have a uh, full contract uh, or, or at least fairly full contract for, uh, for that capacity. Even the Alaska to Texas pipeline, a huge project that is still under uh, enormous scrutiny in the U.S. Congress and so forth. Even that contract, uh, the main uh, lead developer, TransCanada, reports 83% uh, uh, of that pipeline is already contracted. So, um, you know, there's still tremendous demand for these projects. That means tremendous demand for, uh, uh, you know, the companies that put them into practice can, uh, can, can pick up uh, enormous amounts of cash flow, keep their growth going. The existing projects, let's say fracking uh, costs go up, existing projects pretty much steady. Uh, they're going to get their money um, because it's fee generating. Again, um, might, things might be a little more difficult for the producers, but again, probably what you'll see is those costs going through into higher uh, costs at the consumer level. But in any case, whether they do or not, uh, again, the infrastructure companies, the MLPs, make their fees based on um, on uh, uh, their capacity use on these contracts, and these aren't going to change if the cost of fracking goes up. Uh, new projects, uh, you know, I, I, I suppose in a worst case um, where costs really spike through the roof, you'll see less development uh, of, of new projects and maybe fewer opportunities for, for some of these MLPs. That's an issue that uh, we'll be watching very closely. But at least at this point, the current dividends are based on the current projects and those appear uh, pretty steady no matter what happens again with this fracking issue. Again, you can't ignore these, uh, these uh, regulatory issues as an investor. Um, certainly if you're a resident of some of these areas where uh, some of these uh, problems and some of these disputes are occurring, it's a very, very important issue. And I don't want to minimize that, but again, Focusing as an investor, which is what we do at MLP Profits, um, I don't see a whole lot of vulnerability for our holdings at this time. And in fact, uh, you know, they're still, uh, 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 in fact, undervalued relative to the potential uh, that they have in these areas. So that's all I have to say today. I'll look forward to chatting with you next time.